Hey, what's up guys? My name is Boda and welcome back to the Mining Stacker YouTube channel. Today's video, we're going to talk about the aftermath of this crazy pump we had with all these GPU mineable coins, right? So they are finally starting to cool off and we're starting to get clear pictures of the trends of what happened, where they laid out, where they're at now, where they're sitting at, and what I'm going to do about it, right? So I'm just going to go over my personal game plan, how I'm looking at things, what I'm looking at and what's next on the list, right? Because this has been a stupid easy strategy that's been working. We're gonna talk about it and what's next on the agenda, right? So if that sounds good, guys, stay tuned. Let's get to it. So this past month, I'm not gonna go into the pump too much. I'm sure if you follow me on Twitter or seen the videos or watch anybody else's, right? It's been stupid, stupid pumps. But now, finally, things are starting to cool off, right? So I'm gonna just kind of go over how I'm seeing things, right? And what the game plan is now. So for me, I'm gonna harp on mainly Chlore AI and Uri just because they are two of the coins that pumped the freaking hardest, right? In a span of 30 days is just insane. Insane, insane, insane. Hopefully you guys caught that video I did about last month regarding why I'm stacking a lot of these GPU mineable coins. If you jumped into any of them, Pretty much any of these newer GPU mineable coins, not even just the ones I mentioned, any of them you made out like a bandit, right? So now though, things are finally starting to cool off, right? It was crazy how much of a run up they had though. So now we're starting to get a clear picture of what we're gonna do, okay? So for me, I like to move things around. I do not like to just hodl coins, especially ones that I'm not 100% in, right? Certain coins, yes, if it's high confidence play, it has to be a pretty extreme opportunity for me to do something about it, right? In this case, some of these coins, I'm not necessarily long-term holds for me, right? So like the one I would focus on would be Neuri because that's one of the ones I did purchase and I did just dump all of it, right? I was lucky and was able to dump it at 62 or 63. It's currently at 44, right? So a couple options there, right? One is I can rebuy now. Right, if I were to rebuy, I would end up with about 30% more coins, which is nice. Again, that's the advantage of moving things around and not being afraid to do these types of things, right? So again, this is not for everybody. I like doing this. I feel comfortable doing this because of certain thresholds. So for me, it did meet a certain threshold. So this at the time was a micro cap, right? It was in the 2000s ranked by market cap. No longer the case. Okay, so one little caveat, make sure to use CoinGecko for that. Okay, CoinMarketCap still has it ranked, you're right, specifically at over 2,000, 2,231. Same deal with Chlore AI. They have it ranked at 2,207. No longer the case. Chlore AI is now number 524, and that's with this retracement. Prior to this, they were in the top 500. They were 400 and change. Same thing with Uri. Okay, so they are not these tiny little micro caps anymore. So for me, now it caught up to the range of the other, they're still tiny cap, but the other popular coins, so like Elephium, Radiant, Dynex, they're now in that ballpark now. They're in a different range now, essentially, right? So now for me, the reason I dumped all of it now is because it's not a high conviction play for me. It is not a play that I'm gonna hold into the bull market. Okay, so my game plan specifically, I do not want to hold 20 of these little GPU mineable coins have these little small baby allocations. I would rather narrow it down to certain coins and go hard in those. Okay, that's a strategy that has worked extremely well. Okay, and that's why I did as well as I did with some of the coins that I did because they were high conviction for me. And I went harder into those instead of only having like 10,000 cast of a bag and like 100,000 radiant. I went with a 200,000 cast of a bag. I went with a million radiant bag. And those are higher conviction plays, right? And higher risk, but higher reward. And because I feel more confident in them, they did pan out extremely well. So for me, Neuri, right off the rip, not a long-term hold for me, okay? What we were bullish on were the tokenomics. Still has room to run, definitely. Can it go another 10X from here? Definitely. Right, but I would feel more confident in holding a larger bag of like Nexa or Alephium. Out of these smaller coins, these are definitely higher conviction plays for me. And when I look at the ranking, when I look at the potential now from where it's at now, 
Neurite, again, like we just mentioned, it's 535. Alephium, even with this pump, is still 699. It is a smaller cap coin now than Neurite. So for that reason, I would 100% rather dump my Neurite bag, take that nice chunk of profit, throw it into Alephium when the time is right. Right, so it's hard to say when that time is. The smart player would be right now, there was a nice retracement. I would probably at least nibble a little bit, right? If I'm in the mindset that I think it's gonna dump more, then I'll wait for it to dump, dump more. I still haven't necessarily made up my mind on that front. Although it did dump right now, so I am nibbling a little bit. Same with Nexa, I'll add a little bit more to that Nexa bag from there as well, right? Cause same thing, I'm not too sure where it's gonna go. Right, there's still a lot of bullish sentiment. Yes, they are retracing a bit it's because people are taking profits. When you get a like a 20, 30x on a coin, to me, again, this is for me, it seems extremely, extremely silly, and to me, even more reckless to not at least take some profits. Right? If you throw 150 bucks into a coin and that 150 bucks turns into two thousand dollars, it a hundred percent makes sense to take some profits and then throw it into a higher conviction play right, to reinvest that money. So like when I say take profits, I'm not taking profits to then blow that money, right? I'm just reinvesting into another allocation. So for me, I'm gonna put it into higher conviction plays, whether it's other GPU mineable coins or it's some of these bigger caps on dips, or maybe I just hang on to it waiting more longer term for a bigger dip. That's also a possibility, right? So I'm looking at different things, not 100% sure where to go other than I did buy a little bit more Nexa, a little bit more Lithium, and a little bit more of these smaller cap coins, right? So kind of just continuing the that degen play all the way through, right? Because again, these things are not small plays. But if it's a coin that you do see something in long term, then go for it. Then stay there. Like if Neurai was a long term play for me, I would have definitely still sold what I sold. And if it's a 100% long term hold right now, I would just rebuy and get 30% more coins, right? because I like to take advantage of the volatility. I like, for example, with this Nexa pump in early April, I don't wanna ride it all the way up here and then ride it all the way down. Like to me, that is a huge waste. I'd rather go up here, take profit, sell a chunk of it, maybe not all of it, if it's a high conviction play, and then wait for that dip and then buy it down here and then multiply my bags, right? Instead of just riding that X amount of coins all the way through. Again, this is for me. I would not recommend this for anybody. You have to have high conviction that that's going to happen. For me, I do. We are still in a bear market. There is still a lot of time. Who knows if it happens though, right? Maybe it's not as extreme as this. Maybe we stay in this range and we just stay sideways from here until the bull and then we do that massive, hopefully 10 plus X. Who knows, right? But for me, there's definitely a lot of other coins that I can see from where they are at right now. I feel way more confident that they'll do another 10 to maybe higher X, right? So I'm going to allocate into those instead, okay? It's up to you to decide where you see the potential, where you see things. I see things differently than most people. And I kind of have my plays that are higher conviction and I go into those, right? My plan has stayed the same. It is no different from where we were last year when I started doing these videos. The game plan remains. It is the exact same and it's been working stupidly, right? Just essentially looking at these smaller cap coins, throwing in a little bit, writing it up, and then onto the next one, onto the next one, rolling over those profits. Like it's been such a simple, such a stupid strategy that has just worked. Will it continue to work? Who knows? Again, this is my play, this is my strategy, and it's it's been literally stupid. Like, I don't even know how else to describe it other than just stupid, profitable, right? So, this hasn't been the case with every GPU mineable coin. This has been more specific to these newer ones, right? But again, keep in mind now that they're all about in the same range now, okay? So again, Nexa, Neuri, Alephium, again, is 699, Radian is 701. So it's crazy to think that these guys were micro caps in the 2000 range just a few weeks ago and are now above some of these bigger names. They're above Alephium. They're above Radiant. Radiant Nexa is now in the top 500. So now they're in that range, right? Closer to the Dynex range. Dynex cracked the top 400, the 393. And they've been holding that range, right? Ones that haven't been doing so well are those more like legacy GPU mineable coins, your Ergos, your Ravens, etc., etc. 
So again, for me, the play now is to allocate there and to also allocate into some of the next potential pumpers, right? So again, these are my plays. These are what I'm looking at. I would not recommend for you to do this. This is just what I'm doing, right? I'm not here to try to give you financial advice or none of that. This is just what I'm looking at, how I'm playing this, and why I'm doing it, right? One, Etika. This is actually has been the biggest jumper out of all the coins, okay? This thing has been riding at five, six cents for the longest period of time, okay? If you caught this thing at five cents, come for congrats. Look at the 30-day percentage, 4,604%. Okay, the thing was at a nickel, at six cents, as of just Halloween, it was at five cents. Okay, this thing is at two dollars and nineteen cents per coin. Okay, insane, a forty-six x. Stupid, right? This is one I definitely missed. I had heard of Etika and Egas. Totally missed the boat on this one, right? Did a lot of us see this? kind of pump incoming this quickly, this fast, hell to the no. I'm not going to sit here in front and say, oh yeah, I knew these were going to pump. I did not. Not this quickly. I had confidence that they would pump over a period of time. Not in a matter of weeks though. It's been stupid. And that's why for me, that gives me more confidence that it's highly likely that they're probably going to dump a little bit more only because that's just, that growth is like too fast, like artificially fast, right? Come up with your own conclusion. That's just the way I'm looking at it. But Etika has been insane and it still has potential, right? This thing is still a fairly small market cap. When I looked at it yesterday, it was a $5 million market cap. It's now 7.6 million market cap, which is still pretty good upside. For example, Radiant being at number 700, it's at a $25 million market cap, okay? So like that's one I have my eye on. I was thinking about buying yesterday. I should have, I would have been up a little bit already. But I just saw that with uh, the Ospreys, the E100s, the E300s, they will have a bit stream for it, hopefully pretty soon. Sounds like that's going to be next on the priority list for them. We'll see if that pans out, but that's how I'll be accruing some of that. Another one that's got an extreme hype is the stupid <laughs> Caspa 4 Carlson Network. So it's literally just a fork of Caspa. A lot of hype with this thing, though. A lot of people talking about it, a lot of people jumping on it, a lot of even... Pools jumping on it. Hero Miners has a pool. Wooly Pooly has a wool. SRB Miner released that miner. So a lot of hype, a lot of potential. I'm not really messing with it, right? If you are going to, when you create your wallet, make sure it's on a VM or a crappy computer that's you have nothing on it, then go ahead, go for it, right? Because if it does have something malicious, it's not going to affect you. Do not put this on your main computer, though, right? So I think part of the reason this one is getting so much hype, though, is just because of the fact that so many people are feeling the FOMO from, like, these pumps, right? They're like, man, I missed this 20x, this 30x, this whatever x. I'm not going to let that happen again. And therefore, I think that's a big part of the reason why that's happening with this coin right now, right? So can it pan out? Sure. Hopefully it does for all of you guys to do jump in. Hopefully you make out massively, right? But... Because there's just so much benefit to being early, right? You don't need a lot of coins or a lot of time to be able to do that, right? And this is the advantage with having the actual hardware versus buying. There hasn't been too many, like, true spec mining plays. And everybody was calling, like, Neuri and all these spec mining. That's not really... As soon as it's on the exchange, to me, it's no longer spec mining. Okay, like, this one really is spec mining because it is not listed anywhere. The only way to obtain coins is by mining it. This is a true spec mineable coin. Okay, for that reason, might not be a bad idea to jump in, right? Realistically, I would be on Etika though because it's extremely profitable right now on GPUs, right? Even with the crazy profitability, even as of yesterday, it's still super profitable only because I, I, a lot of people are messing around with this Carlson thing, right? Um, one, another one I have my eye on, Rethereum, okay? Super tiny market cap. This thing is at about a million dollar market cap still. It's been around. They're developing. Who knows? Maybe it can go to zero. Maybe at least gets to the point of Radiant, right? Again, this is kind of on the timeline of where, what I saw with like Chlor and Uri. I'm just looking because if it just reaches that point, which is not a super high bar, but if it were to just reach that point, extreme potential, okay? This thing is a million dollar market cap. Again, Radiant is at $25 million. 
if it just reaches radiance level, if it just reaches that 700 mark, that's a 25x potential. Again, same thing, $100 potential for that amount of money. Okay, extreme potential. Somewhat high risk, right? Not necessarily super bullish on the project, but again, I wasn't on any of these either. More bullish on the community and just the community driving it to that point, right? Which to me, I think is doable. Who knows? Maybe it goes to zero, but to me, it's worth throwing a couple hundred bucks in, right? Again, not financial advice, not recommending you to do that. Just these are my plays. These are the things I'm looking at. Or again, if you have rigs, I'm mentioning more buying than anything, but if you have a ton of rigs, I would definitely throw a rig or two on there for a month. Stack up some coins, right? It's just there's so much potential if you're able to catch these things early on, right? Whether it's mining, whether it's buying, extreme, extreme potential, right? This is one I wouldn't I have zero interest in. I'm just putting it on there just because on the coin perspective, this is one of the smaller cap coins that you can compare. So same thing. This is a $1.6 million market cap. If it just reaches Radiant, it's a 15x, right? It was kind of easy comparison when we did uh, Ethereum just because it was about a million dollars. That one's 25 so it's an easy 25x, right? But this is another comparison. Again, that's what you want to focus on is these market caps. Don't focus too much on, like, I know a lot of people are like, oh, man, I love Nexa because I have a hundred and something million coins or whatever. It's it's still based off of the market cap, right? So just remember that in. Don't worry about too much about the don denomination. Look at that market cap, right? Focus on that more so than anything. Um, although that is a reason I think this one will pump hard. That's actually a big selling point for me. I personally hate it. I hate seeing all these zeros. But a lot of people love that fantasy of like, oh man, if it just reaches one cent, right? And that alone, that's one of the biggest hype things with like all these like meme coins and all that kind of stuff. So it kind of has those meme pumpamentals, but it is actually a more serious project. I'm saying that, but in reality, it is a solid project, right? But just something to factor in, something to think about. Um, so another thing I'd mentioned, things you want to focus on if you're kind of undecided on where to go. You're like, oh, I kind of like these equally. You want to look at the emissions of these coins, right? Which one is first to have a halving? Which one has an extreme emission schedule? Like we've mentioned Murai. We've mentioned that plenty of times. That emission schedule is pretty crazy. If you haven't looked into it, look into it. Radiant has their halving coming up. The other thing I would focus on are which coins are most likely to go ASIC next, right? It's another thing that's potentially going to happen. My guess, my top two that I would say are probably next, Alephium and Radiant. Why? Because those algos are prime for ASICs, okay? Especially Alephium. They've been around almost two years now. Blake 3 is extremely good for ASICs. I could definitely see that one being next. Same with Radiant. Um, Radiant to me is a little bit more or less likely. Alephium, I think, would be the first one, if anything. Who knows if it happens, but we've already seen popularity on the FPGA front, right? We have seen them for Alephium. We've seen that Super Scalar. It has actually best rooms for both of them, for Radiant and Alephium, and does extremely well. It is a larger FPGA. We do know that there is another one coming. There is a K11 on the way that's going to be most likely bigger than the previous one, right? We'll see how long that lasts. Realistically, my guess would be by summer at the latest, right? Potentially the spring, probably around this summer, we should see somebody releasing one. Who it will be, who knows? Maybe it's like a gold shell, maybe it's a ice river, maybe it's another unknown company, but I would not be surprised at all to see those. And for that reason, that's another reason I would be trying to stack up as much as possible of those coins or whatever coin you think will be next, right? Maybe you think completely differently, you think it's gonna be another one, Go for it, right? Or just your higher conviction plays, right? Whichever ones you think are going to pump the hardest, those are the ones you want to go into, right? Um, one another thing to touch on with the ASIC front, I've heard a lot of people mention like, oh man, there's no way that market cap is so tiny. There's no way. We've seen from Bitmain that they will be petty. They will do it based on killing the competition. Right, we saw it all year long. I called it right from when they announced that CKB miner that they were making it crystal clear that they were going after these altcoin miners, specifically in that case with Goldshell. And then they even doubled down again on it when they released that handshake miner. 
Handshake to me is the best example of that because they have no business doing one for Handshake. It is a super tiny coin, very decentralized, not any hype at all whatsoever. The only reason for them to do that is literally because of the competition. And I think that's the same case with why they're doing this Alio Miner. I'm sure they got word of these other manufacturers creating provers and creating systems for it, right? Superscaler was actually one, and I've seen at least two other smaller manufacturers creating miners for them as well. I'm sure they got wind of that, and that's the reason they went that route as well, right? So do not be surprised. Again, Handshake is a very tiny network. By market cap, it is smaller than even these small GPU mineable coins. It is barely in the top 1,000. It's like number 900 and something, Okay. And as far as the amount of units they've created, it's most likely under 500 units, period, right? For example, the entire network hash rate is somewhere between three and a half to four and a half petahash. Let's say it's at three and a half petahash, right? So that's 3,500 terahash. Even if the entire network is just HS3s, it makes it insane. There's only, it's a small amount. Right, so if we have 3,500 terahash, let's divide it by the nine, because each HS3 is nine terahash. That would make 388 units, period. And that's if the entire network, which is most likely not, right? There's a ton of these little box miners that people like, don't care about the, the wattage and they have them plugged in. But even if the entire network were just HS3s, there's only that many units, right? It's been about nine, no, 10 months now, almost 11 months now that it's been out. And they haven't even done a restock. Literally, the only purpose for that machine was to kill Gold Shell. That's it. It's them being petty, them trying to get rid of the competition. So if they were to get wind of somebody creating one for Alephium, for Radiant, I would not at all be surprised to see them just come up with one just to get rid of them. Right? But on the same front, hopefully they are now starting to pivot their production towards their Bitcoin units. Right? So... We have the S21 coming up, T21 come up, and they got to start fulfilling these orders, right? As we've seen on Twitter from a lot of these big farms, we've seen their freaking order numbers, right? In some cases, not ordering out of the hundreds, not ordering by the thousands, by the tens of thousands, right? I think Bit Farms was the latest one, something like 20 or 30,000 units for one farm, one order. They mentioned that many units with the potential of another similar size order from one farm. Okay, so hopefully they start pivoting their production towards that and they start leaving some of those altcoin miners alone. But again, who knows? Bitmain likes to be Bitmain. But just wanted to give you that update. Just overall, it's been insane. We'll see if it continues, right? It's potential that's not even over, right? We have all this hype with the ETFs. Everybody's still super bullish. Things are still pumping. It's potential these things are having this breather now and they continue to run up. Again, who freaking knows the only thing we do know now is that again a lot of these coins that we thought were tiny coins they're not in that ball game anymore they are now real deal right which is crazy to think that both of them both neurite and chlor are now higher and a good chunk higher than even like radiant or alephium it's insane right so the landscape has definitely changed and it's continuing to change and it's going to continue to change even more in just here in a few weeks when Flux releases their proof of useful work. Maybe it creates more hype and it bleeds more into these other AI coins or into these existing ones. Maybe that alone acts as a catalyst for Chlor AI, for Neur AI, right? There's still so many unknowns, so many things going on. It's just the main thing, guys, be involved, right? That's the crappiest thing. I've been mentioning that thing all year. The last thing you want to do is being that guy that coulda, woulda, shoulda guy, right? It's still not too late. We're still got another year of this bear market, although it's we're running out of time for sure. So you definitely want to play catch up. But again, I know everybody's crazy bullish. Like, oh man, I missed the pump. I missed all this. It's you got to remember where we're at, right? You got to really zoom out. When you look at some of the charts of these bigger coins, you really see it. Right, like I'll give just Solana as the example. You look right now, like, oh man, I missed out. I should have caught it back here, or I should have caught it when it was at, you know, nine dollars. Now I completely missed out. It's like, zoom out, guys. Look at the all-time chart. Okay, we're here. This is the previous bull market. Okay, hopefully this next bull market even surpasses this. 
Okay, so just keep that in mind. Stay in the game. Be involved. Don't be that coulda, woulda, shoulda, guys. Get in the game. If you want to take advantage of the market, you got to be in the market. You got to take that risk if you want these gains. Okay, if that's not your thing, that's not your thing, right? Everybody, if you want to just mine and hodl, that's cool too. There's no wrong way to do this. The only thing you'd be missing out on is just not participating. Whether it's mining, buying, whatever you want to do, however you want to crew, just get in the game, guys. Get in the game. Take advantage of these gains, right? There's been money all over all year long. Stop missing out. Get in there, all right? Let me know in the comments, guys, what you guys are doing. Are you guys taking advantage? Did you guys catch that video I did last month about stacking these GPU coins and you made out? Let me know in the comments what you guys are doing, what you guys are planning. Do you guys think the market's going to continue to pump? Do you think we're going to pump into the ETF and then dump after? Let me know. What's your game plan? What y'all thinking? What y'all doing? Let me know in the comments, guys. Please comment, like, and subscribe, guys. Thank you for watching. And I am out.